My name is Rewat Dionandan. I'm an epidemiologist and a professor at the University of Ottawa. And I've got some thoughts about the COVID-19 pandemic. When I teach my students about the social determinants of health, I sometimes begin by asking them what they think the cause of malaria is. And some will say a mosquito bite. And others will say the plasmodium parasite that lives inside the mosquitoes. And, and some clever ones will say, no, it's the standing water where the mosquito grows and reproduces that bites you later. So ultimately they'll get to the point where they'll say, maybe it's poverty. Maybe poverty is the cause of malaria because without poverty, you're not in the position to get malaria. That's where I'm going with this. If you've been paying attention, you know that COVID-19 seems to disproportionately affect people with certain underlying conditions. If you've got diabetes, obesity, hypertension, so-called pre-existing conditions, you're much more likely to be hospitalized and to die of this disease. But who are these people? They are overwhelmingly poor people, because poor people are more likely to have a variety of chronic issues that predispose them to bad outcomes in a variety of medical situations. And that's true for a number of reasons. For example, if you're poor, you can't afford nutritious foods as much. If you're poor, you haven't got as much time and resources to make yourself physically fit. You haven't got time for childcare, for example. As well, if you're poor, you're probably not in a position where you can work from home. You've probably got a physically demanding job. You probably are taking mass transit to get to work and exposing yourself to all kinds of people who might give you the virus, right? If you're poor, you probably can't keep your kids home to be schooled remotely. You have to send them to school and they're gonna get infected and maybe bring it home to you. So if you are economically dispossessed, you are far more likely to suffer in this pandemic. And if you're poor, you're more likely to have some other kinds of demographic characteristics, like be a racialized non-white person. We know that if you're non-white in North America, you have a much higher chance of being hospitalized and of dying from this disease. And if you're indigenous, that probability increases again. And as the vaccines are rolled out, we're gonna see this manifest again. Uh, if you're going to a centralized vaccination center, if you haven't got a car, you got to take public transit, you have to take a day off work to get there. And if you're poor, you probably haven't got an employer that lets you take sick days or days off work to get vaccinated. If you have a bad side effect to the vaccine, which some people will, maybe you got to spend a day in bed. If you're poor, you probably can't take that day off. So increasingly and unendingly, the poor and the racialized are going to be disproportionately affected by COVID-19. Pandemics have a way of revealing the inequities of a society, the cracks in a society, the divisions in a society. And this one has certainly done that. It's shown us our political divisions for sure. Just watch what happens in the USA along political lines there. Yeah. It has effects on gender lines as well. Men are more likely to die of this disease for a number of reasons, probably including men are more likely to be in physically demanding jobs that expose them to this disease. Men are more likely to have more risky attitudes towards their personal health, more likely to smoke, more likely to have fatty foods as part of their diet, etc., etc., etc. So where am I going with all this? I think we have to remember that there are people suffering in this pandemic, not just because they have a disease and not just because they lost their business, but because they are poor to begin with, fragile, vulnerable, a meal away from starvation, uh, a couple of bad luck scenarios away from losing everything. And this pandemic has pushed them to the limits. There's a lot of suffering going on and we have to be compassionate. We have to be kind to each other. I know that's an old adage that people are getting tired of hearing, but that's the only way we get through this. What I'm hoping as well, is that what we've learned from this is that something like a public health crisis of an infectious disease like COVID-19 has a way of accelerating the slow decline that you usually see in chronic disease. The people who are obese and hypertensive and diabetes, they're headed for trouble. And that trouble would probably manifest in years and decades. It's a slow car crash, metaphorically and COVID-19 has compressed that car crash into some tragic months. That should drill home to us the need to invest, to spend time and money and resources and attention on caring for the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder so that we all don't suffer.
It's also the humane thing to do. So moving forward, when this is over, and it will be over, I want us to uplift the poor, to look at the people who haven't got options, and to give them options. This is the nature of public health. This is the goal of a caring society. And I think we can do it. I think Canada is in a particularly special place, and in a good state of mind, and is of the appropriate caring caliber to make that happen, now that we've seen what the probable outcomes are. Thank you very much.